Hey everybody, it's another episode of Go Flix Yourself. My name is Ben Conowitz, and with me as always is the screwdriver to my jungle juice, Bradford Omen. Hey, that's me, Citrus and Vodka. And the white Zinfandel to my jungle juice, oh. Nate Laux. Oh, hello, Bradford. Now, that's, that's classic. That's classic that's Zinfandel. Classy. Yeah. That's a classy Zinfandel talking. And especially you compare the jungle juice, that's like the the dickhead's water. <laughs> J- jungle juice gets the party started, Brad. And that's why, and you're a screwdriver because you're a basic bitch. Uh, what can I say? I like a good flavorful Two ingredi- vodka Two and ingredients. delicious juice. What is your what is your drink of choice when you go to the bar? Like for the first time, you're going to go there. You don't know the quality of their drinks. What are you going to get? And how many fingers? <laughs> uh, that's none of your business. Um, it's uh, usually I'll usually get a Jack and Coke from any any bar. Um, I think testing the quality of the bar is I'll ask for a White Russian. Yeah, if you're gonna like, get a drink, they're like, hey, get, does this bartender know what they're doing? Yeah. No, because Brad's like, I want milk in my drink. Exactly. <laughs> that's the first thing I thought. Oh, I was like, oh. is that, hey, bartender, what of what, what drinks with milk in them can you make? Hey, hey, I'd like my stomach to be messed up. Can you put some milk in there, Absolutely. please? Oh, yeah. I'd like a nice milky mess, please. <laughs> hey, w- can you pour some grenadine and vodka and some cottage cheese? I'd really just like to get that with a spoon I all actually, night. I'm not like you. I yeah, like cottage no, cheese. No, cottage cheese is gross. You like cottage yeah. cheese. is amazing. You it's guys, disgusting. it's my favorite food. You can go fuck uh, yourself. It's amazing. And if, you put, if you're one of those people, though, sorry, Evelini is here. And Ashley is here. They're at the peanut gallery tonight. Um, so I, but I'm saying this, and I'm getting like thumbs up and thumbs down from them. But I will say, this might like she gave me a thumbs up, Evelini, about cottage cheese. However, I'm gonna maybe ruin it here because if you're one of those people that put something in your cottage cheese, like salt and pepper or a pineapple, uh, you can go fuck yourself. It's it's just. It's just cottage cheese. It's just by I itself. Lost Evelini. I lost Evelini. I saw her. You can talk. Say is that what? You put both of those. Oh, keep people. Okay, you could have it plain or with. Okay, you know what? We're best friends again. It's totally fine. Cottage cheese is gross, uh, but yes, I do love a good milky cocktail. And <laughs> <laughs> that's like a few times. Brad brings the sponsor on, and I want to throw up. He's never really said a sentence that made me want to vomit. But like, I love a good milky cocktail. I, I, I do feel like <laughs> that is our new motto. Go flick yourself the milky cocktail of podcast. Put this milky cocktail in your ears. Absolutely. Um, oh. but, but no, I, so yeah, a white Russian is how I'll test and we'll see oh. how good they are actually making a, a nice drink. Uh, if, you, if you're if uh, you not disgusting and you want to test a bar, uh, an old fashioned is usually that's I'm usually an old fashioned or Manhattan. Ha- I do to love old fashioned. A, a old fashioned or Manhattan, Manhattan is usually yeah. going to be where I'm going to try at <sighs> first. Uh, that, and that's just because we're whiskey men. <laughs> yeah, uh, got some hair on my chest. If we, if we had a reality show, it'd be called the Whiskey, whiskey Men. No, it would not. <laughs> it'd be called the One Hundred, because Brad and Nate and I uh, standing next to each other looks like the number one hundred. I said, oh, or, or it'd be called uh, Fats and the Pastor. <laughs> Fats and the Pastor. <laughs> Sounds... And you think it's two people, but it's three. <laughs> <laughs> like Jake and the Fat Men. <laughs> Nate and the Fat Men. <laughs> Oh shit! Uh, Brad went to a trunk or treat event tonight because it is the spooky dookie season. Yeah, that's true. It's spooky dookie season. Well, yeah. If you take a poop in the month of October, you call it spooky dookie. Uh, so, so how yuck. was it? How was it? Did you just scare some children? No, I. I, I, I why do you assume my cousin was uh, scary? I mean, no. I just like the other three hundred and sixty-four days a year. He means. Oh, that's what I <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it was the weather was trash. <laughs> It was so cold that you went home and you actually did. You don't. You're not a big drinker, honestly. You're really not. Yeah. But you went home and you did. You said you like, man, I poured myself two fingers of, of whiskey. Yeah, because I knew to I needed warm to warm myself up right up. away. Yeah. So then he held his fingers up horizontally like you do mm-hmm. because that's what fingers are. And I said, uh, oh, I also use two fingers, but then I put them in vertically, <laughs> <laughs> and it fills the glass because I am me. Now, Brad, if, can I ask you a, a quick question? Uh, you can do whatever you want all day, buddy. What? what? What's your favorite spooky dookie memory? My favorite spooky dookie memory? Yeah. When I took a scary shit. Was it die Aria? <laughs> uh oh I mean, there's plenty of those rough stories for sure. <laughs> now you guys have never you seen a ghost. You can't have love you? milk as much as I do. <laughs> hold on a second. Did you just say Did you just say he, hold on. You guys have never seen a ghost, have right, you? I mean, <laughs> we're not talking seeing ghosts, right? I gotta know what I'm dealing with. Here. I mean, I've never seen I've a never ghost. I've never seen a ghost. 
I, th- I mean, I've heard some weird noises, honestly, in this house. Uh, and this is a modular that was built two years ago, so it's not like... It's, <laughs> it's, not, it's not, not making castle. any spooky sounds. <laughs> this, yeah, it's not like, oh, I can't believe who died here back in the day. <laughs> hey, Ben, that is a house settling. <laughs> exactly. Okay? But I will say, I was telling Ashley this, like, whatever, uh, right before her and the boys moved in, dead in the middle of the night, 2 a.m., large crash. Like, okay, something fell off a shelf. I'm going to walk out into my living room, and I'm going to see this. It's pitch black, 2 a.m., I scoured the house. Nothing. I opened every, and it's again, it's a modular. There's not a lot of storage space, so every door is really accessible. You like, you open the door. You're not going in. You're just looking because that's all. That's all the space there is. I checked absolutely everything and could never find something that fell. Did you lock your bedroom? door? I did. I locked my bedroom door, and I was alone. <laughs> and I'm, I'm 330 pounds. I'm six foot two. It's not, you know, I got about uh, five seconds of fight in me, but it's going to be a hard fight for that five seconds. I still locked my door, and I put my feet under the covers. Of course you do. I still tuck my covers in. I tuck my sheet in because I don't know for sure there's not monsters underneath. I, I'm a stomach sleeper because of that. I'm like a turtle. Like if you hit the yep. back, it's fine. <laughs> my soft underbelly, I don't think it's scritched, scritched up. See, I, I, tuck, I tuck my blanket under my feet, but then I also got to put the other foot out because I got to regulate my body temperature. Exactly. Dude, mm, 100%. That's risky. That's risky. <laughs> does it hang over? It does, doesn't it? Does uh-huh. it hang over the bed a little bit? Yes, abso- little, absolutely. Little monsters That's grabbing scary. it though. That's scary. Yeah, it's all right. Hey, uh, who who legitimately and earnestly wrote a check for this week's episode? Somebody's got to be paying these bills. Ben, let me ask you something. What's what's your favorite soda flavor? This seems like a very lazy version of the question. Normally, you're a little bit more inventive than this. Yeah. No, because I want to try again. I want to. No, I want to lead in. What's your favorite autumnal memory? No, but I'm (laughs) I'm leading into a more specific question. All right, my favorite soda flavor. Yeah. uh, Root beer. That's your favorite soda flavor. Yes. What about like what's the the strangest soda you've ever tasted? The strangest soda I've ever tasted. I yeah. think that I was at one of those like rocket shops, the yeah. rocket fish shops that you can buy all those things. And I think that I had a, a, a mango habanero soda. Oh, it was hard to drink. Yeah, I wouldn't even want to touch that with a ten foot pole. Okay, <laughs> that sounds nasty. It was, but I drank it. Was it hot? You drank the whole thing? No, I mean I drank. Like, oh, I you took a sip. Yeah, okay, I, I was gonna say you took a whole bottle of that. Like, no. what's wrong with your body? Okay. <laughs> well, okay. I mean, Ever, uh, evergreen oh, question. Hold, hold on. You said that. Ashley's sitting right next to me. And I hope the listener heard. <laughs> What's oh. wrong with your body? And she goes, <laughs> <laughs> like there, there's a lot. There's a lot. Like <laughs> <laughs> I hope that they caught that too. Like, just, <laughs> <laughs> like you don't know, Ben. All right, you guys are going to be excited about. Oh this. boy! All right, because I got something. That I'm gonna. I got. I got four cups down here. All right, two fingers. And uh, I'm ready to give you guys a little, a little taste, oh, t- a taste of uh, something Wait, delicious. Hold on, you said that you had a. Ba- you said it was root beer, and then you had. You were going to tell you another question. I did. What was the weirdest soda you ever uh, flavor you ever had? Oh, well, that's not right. Okay. I popped this bottle open. I don't know if you heard that sweet hiss of soda. Yeah, you're gonna leave a bottle cap in my basement until I sell the place. I oh, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna leave more than a bottle cap here. <laughs> spooky dookie. I'm gonna leave a spooky dookie in your hookie. Okay, that's uh, a slang for house. Right. I don't like it. All right, of this. Uh, listeners, I'm looking at. I'm this looking at a Corona. Soda. Okay, he's and pouring a Corona. Then, Ashley, will you grab that, please? Grab this. Pass it down. It's don't got spill. the color of Corona. A we gotta pass that to Nate. Oh, uh, poorly vitamined urine. <laughs> this is uh, well. That's that's a Ben P right there. Ashley, this is for Ben. Obviously, you guys can get down on this too if you guys want to try. Ev, yeah, Evelyn, I'm gonna give you a little bit of this. Oh wow, that smells like pure. Just oh, like, that's tree sap. Oh, that's tree sap. Oh, what is this? What is this sponsor of ours? What is this sponsor? Uh, this is chocolate of something. This is a chocolate something. <laughs> Is it? Do you guys feel the chocolate? Chocolate rain. <laughs> uh, I haven't had this yet. Hold on. What chocolate rain? Did you say it's good, Ev? Oh, I don't know. You got oh. a you got a Brazilian palate. I don't know if I can trust it. I'm surprised by this flavor. Actually, I wasn't expecting this to taste this good. I but... don't, the smell is worse than the taste. The taste. I will agree. It it smells extremely saccharine. Like there's it like smells a, sickeningly sweet. Holy yeah. crap. Yeah. But then the taste is very palatable. So yeah, the taste actually isn't bad. It's almost like a, it tastes kind of like a butterscotch soda. Is it like a chocolate? It's s'mores. 
Ah. From Jones Soda. S'mores flavored soda. I do like Jones. Jones makes a good soda. Jones does make a good soda. And but this, it doesn't taste like s'mores, though. No, it, it there's there's definitely- a, I can see what they're trying to get, a like a marshmallow A slight toasted marshmallow flavor yeah. to it. But, then, but clearly- It smells Nate, more like it. But Nate, Nate got the chocolate, he though. He tasted chocolate. Yeah. But I will tell you what, we didn't taste graham cracker. Uh, I mean, I did say it has a kind of a butterscotch flavor, which is pretty close. But butterscotch and, and, and like honey made, no? Uh, a little bit. You know what? I rescind that uh, that remark. Yeah, but it's definitely not. I, I was expecting this to be worse, honestly. But it's not bad. I'm not. I'm not upset with it. What? Do you want it? Nice little slurp there. <laughs> uh, Nate. Yeah. What's the last movie you saw? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna confess. I had, had a very busy week. I've been working a lot, and oh, this sounds like the start of an excuse. No, I did see one movie, and it was the movie. Just I one movie again? Yeah, I know, I know, guys. I know. <sighs> okay, but can, can we say? Hey, hey, hey! Let me say something. You are a very busy person. Yeah, I got, I got stuff. Going Things on. are going, and and you watched the movie that was assigned to you. I did. So everything that was required of him has been done. Brad, I also your problem? Went, I, I just, was going. Also, he brought his girlfriend, who we have never met. Yes, and she is just as lovely as I always thought she would be, and may I say, even better in person. Is she giving you a job later? <laughs> okay. I am hoping that she hires me. I am so tired. <laughs> I am so tired of being a small business owner. Uh, okay, but he- here, here's the thing. I was going to see another film. Oh! That is, that is true. I was on my way to the theater Brad. to see a film that, that, is true. that you my here. friend Brad yeah, partially. said, let's go see. It's pretty much my fault. And I was I'm so sorry. My is way. that the best we're going to get? It's pretty much my fault. In what way is this, and I'm not, this is not a bit, tell me organically, in what way is this literally anyone else's fault? Like, what, how is this not exactly 100%, 100% your, your, your fault. fault? It is my fault, however, you- What's the however? What's the however? <laughs> you got, what's the however? <laughs> anyway, just however? Stop, no, 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 stop, however, stop. Hey, and your however. therapist, and your therapist and friend, just stop there. It this was is, your fault. This is your problem, right? You keep going. It is my fault. Period. And then wait for somebody else to but, fucking say something. But instead, you're like, but, it was my fault. If I do that, however, no one's going to say anything. <laughs> you guys also could have checked the time. Oh, my God. <laughs> Brad said, 9.30 a.m. Cinemark Valparaiso, Indiana, go Crusaders. Let's get in there and let's watch a movie. And turns out, no 9.30 showing of the movie Saturday night. It did not end up playing. It was at Cinemark in Mishawaka. And where were you when you found this information out? I was on my drive to the theater. I was in Westville, Yeah, Indiana. thankfully only he was in Westville. Yeah, he was 15 minutes from his home. Ben, let me ask you, where were you? I was I was in- You said you were moving pinball machines. I was moving pinball machines to the to the Blue Chip Casino, the lovely Blue Chip Casino in Mission City, Indiana. And that's not and where lovely you were, couple where you were has, supposed to be, right? has rented uh, pinballs from Full Tilt Arcade and Pinball, located in LaPorte, Indiana. They rented- Rented pinballs for their wedding. They had a spooky themed wedding. That's fun. And they they wanted us, so we spooky brought over Dookie spooky Dookie. No, no, because it was a great wedding. It was not shitty. We brought over Elvira and Iron Maiden, mm. and we were going to bring over Halloween, but it was broken. Was the is the Foo Fighters Halloween themed? Or no, no, it's, it's a sci-fi, sci-fi theme. Themed. So we also brought over. Uh, 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 here's the funny part: we accidentally brought over Dale Jr. Uh, the Dale Jr. Earnhardt, like the, oh, the racing that's game. that's scary. We accidentally did. Well, depending on the wedding. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so we're like, oh, sorry about that. But no, we ended up bringing over like Guns N' Roses. That's not really scary, but yeah. at least it's a, a fun band one. Um, no, they were very happy, obviously. But, 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 I made the mistake, uh, and so I had to bring over Iron Maiden and Elvira on Saturday. So by myself, unloading two pinball machines and getting them into a casino How on the second floor. How do you get them in by yourself? Uh, it was not easy. I'm not going to joke to you. I'm not going to joke this to you. This part wow. of the podcast is going down. He <laughs> just said he's not joking. But now okay. he's getting spe- into, you're getting the specifics of moving pinball machines now. Yeah. Like, we love the arcade, but come on, I'm going to shoot myself I just want to know how there somebody moves. There is a moves specific a th- cart made for pinballs. Oh. You, you put it underneath, you jack it up with your foot. Okay. But you have to be, you have to, um, thank God I'm, we just talked about I'm a huge, huge fat guy. So like putting my foot down on it, it just it's it's leverage. You have to literally so Oscar is our assistant manager at the arcade. He's twenty years old, nineteen years old. Not the grouch. He, no, but he's probably hundred and seventy pounds, hundred and sixty pounds soaking wet. He struggles to like step down on it to raise a pinball machine because those are yeah. 250, 300 pounds. And so you put it on the pinball cart and you and you roll it, which is fine, but it was in the back of a 
like a Penske truck with a lift gate, and I've got one hand on the lift gate button pushing it down while I'm holding this thing that's on wheels to try to not like make it roll off. I got one hand and on this, the lift gate, you know, th- and the other hand is holding on to the thing. That, that pin, pinball machine. Anyway, <laughs> it got done, but I couldn't go to the movie. Yeah, it's a good thing he couldn't, though, because as we established, I had the wrong time anyway. Uh, so no one except me got to see Saturday night so for this Nate, podcast. Nate, what's your what what movie did you watch? Yeah, and and who you assigned watch? it to you? I was assigned a film by my buddy Ben Conowitz uh, yeah, called don't, Demolition Man. Don't it have is to say a it like that. Though, movie like. from nineteen ninety three. You, know, you, you have to say it like that. Uh, ben Conowitz. I mean, come on, man. Ooh, it's, it's like where you got to make the vowels bounce too. I know, but I'm but I'm yeah, I don't like that. No, but that's how you like do the the beginning, right? Yeah, I really don't like that. Don't <laughs> 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 hey, friends! You're like, yeah, like the a morning shock jog. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Burrito and Beans. <laughs> burrito and Beans. <laughs> welcome to the welcome to the extremely racist podcast I have called no, Burrito and Beans. First of all, it was extremely racist to be called Burrito and Beans. <laughs> <laughs> now that sounds like me. Yeah, exactly. So. Damn it! I can't I can walk into this. Uh, so I don't, you, if I had a pass to do it, I would do the accent, but I don't. So what movie did Ben Conowitz give you? <laughs> come on, man! Now you're just being shitty. Ben Conowitz, come on! <laughs> I really want to. Like I really want to do it. <laughs> Assholes. All right, I saw a, a film uh, made in 1993, set in 1996, uh, starring set in 1996. Well, initially. Uh, so these okay. characters. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, it's a time travel film. Yep. Um, it's so this is a film called Demolition Man. It stars Sylvester Sloan, Wesley Snipes, Sandra Bullock, America's Sweetheart, and Dennis Leary, America's Sweetheart, Dennis Leary. Dennis Leary, who is America's other sweetheart as well, and Nigel Hawthorne, Britain's America's Sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> And so this film um, is so. Uh, but let me ask you a couple of questions here. Yeah, Demolition Man is an is an all time like at least people know do of you, it. Do you love this film? I do. I really do. Uh, I grew up on this film, and that's why I was mm-hmm. thirteen when I saw it. Maybe twelve. Um, this movie, at least in the zeitgeist, people do know what this is. So this isn't mm-hmm. some underrated weird film. This was like an A list film at the time that came out. What did you know about this film going into it? it, it that it existed. Been, I so knew it existed. Did you did you have any did you know any of the jokes in it? Did you know that any was like the premise at all? No, 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 no. I didn't know any of it. it okay. I, so I I knew it was kind of futuristic. Okay. Um I knew that, but I didn't know the time travel element of it. I didn't know any of the premise. Sure, sure. Um I see and I, I love the idea that Sylvester you can watch Sloan. this through new eyes. Yeah. Like it's just funny to see, like think about that. And so the 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 whole idea is you've got the this Criminal and this uh, police FBI. What what is what is this? I mean, his name's John Spartan, and he is what a is police his, officer. In a the police future. officer. I didn't know if he was like FBI or something. No, but I think police officer. It's a police officer who are cryogenically frozen in 1996. Uh, they wake up um, in the 2030s. Simon Phoenix is Wesley Snipes' character. Yeah, oh, I don't know if people care about the names, but um, oh, I mean that's one of the cooler names in. I was gonna say yeah. it's really it badass. Simon, Simon Phoenix, Phoenix is a great villain. Name. Yeah, that's a, that's a badass. In the 2030s, they wake up, and guess what? Kamala Harris is president, <laughs> <laughs> and there's no more crimes. <laughs> Suck it, losers. <laughs> we haven't had a. Do you remember what they call a, 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 a homicide in the future in this movie? What? Murder, death, kill. A murder, death, kill. This I'm I'm struggling to find out that you actually watched the movie because you don't remember the names. You don't remember that a murder. I did watch kill. this movie after you told me to watch it, and I've had a lot of life since then. So, oh damn! Oh, brutal. Um, Ouch! And you know as well as I do that I don't pause movies when I go pee. Oh, oh here we go. Oh, great! Here comes old pee pants. Shut up, way, Ashley. By the way, I feel Ashley's like over here pumping your fist. Be... I'm like, shut up, Ashley. Hey, Ashley, real quick. Okay, Dash, I should yeah, not have called you down quick, here for this. Ashley. Oh, oh no! Does it drive you nuts sometimes when you get up and you're just like, "I'm gonna go to the bathroom. I'm gonna go wash my my hands at the sink." And Ben's always like, "Let me pause it," and then he gets mad because he pauses the film all the time. It's like, go ahead, just just watch it. It's fine. Does that ever happen it's to you? A fight every time. I, it's a fight every time I sit down. Every Why? single time I sit down on a couch. He's a, he's kind of annoying that, right? Because it makes no. He makes perfect sense. It's an audio visual medium. I can do twelve things at once. No, you yes, can't. Can. No, yes, can. you can't. 
Can you do two things at once? No, because then five minutes do after do you went to go fold the towels, wait a minute. Why is his arm gone? I'm folding the towels on the floor, watching the TV. No, you're not. No, yeah. no one's watching. The, no one's watching the TV and folding towels. It's, it's, it's gone from. I used to say, Ashley, if we're going to commit to watching a film together, I want you to enjoy it. I want you to pay attention. And now I've lost that battle. So then I say, when I have to pause it, it ruins my enjoyment of the film. So I'm not doing that anymore. You get up, I'm pausing it because I want to watch this. I want to be, I don't want to be, well, the light's on. Right. And I hear her like on her the phone, like from the bathroom, like, no. are we, what are we about to be for Halloween? I'm like, oh my God, I'm, I'm going to pause it. Don't pause it. Are we going to make soup? I'm not joking. I'm not joking. That's kind of what happens. And then is there like a real fight from that? After it's a, it's not, I'll say that it's not a real fight, but maybe I need to put the microphone over here. Is it a real fight? It's is there real frustration? Yeah. As I'm grabbing her leg, is it a real fight? <laughs> Be honest, Ashley. I don't, I, it's. It is definitely real frustration. Oh, yeah. Yes, because it's not my favorite thing to do. I'm not a TV or movie watcher, but I do it with him at the end of the night. Because so he like, likes it. Chill out. Because you care about now. him. But it's also my time to like relax and and do the things that I needed to do. But. But also here, let me let me defend Ashley real quick because if she doesn't do it, then that just means three hours later she's gonna have to do it eventually. So what do you say if I say then? It's okay. I'll watch it by myself. You don't need to watch it. And she's like, No, no, I want to watch it with you. Because she wants to be. She wants to do something that you like. But to I'm do. like, No, don't watch it with me. Go do the things you want to do. Now, is Ashley? Can it, you like crochet? A lot of people like crochet, or yep. I like to read. I will read next to him. But yeah, but then you can't but watch the movie and read. Yeah, but like you, you have to. If you're doing something, especially with your hands or something like that, that requires you to look down and keep track of something else, you're not paying attention to the movie. And there are cool shot compositions there's like some yeah. some the way something is shot and captured you know like you'll see certain details you'll miss something visually that is part of the story because you're supposed to experience that part of a movie in addition to the sound that's so, the, so the part is like a this very is an ongoing conversation a very by the famous, way with us because i yeah. do not pause when i go but a very pee, famous and example, i do pee every 15 minutes a very famous example of this is something like the usual suspects where the whole time it's going to be a big twist and all of the visual cues along the way yeah. have led up to this and then it's like well i don't know that movie wasn't very good because like it turns out that guy was just that guy okay whatever yeah and it's like no you didn't even watch the film like how can we have the same experience and it's like when you when people come away saying that's not a very good movie i'm like well did you watch it of course i did well you were dealing with this and you did this and you went to the bathroom you watched like you w physically watched half an hour of a two hour film yeah. you heard 80% of it I just don't know that that's watching a film that's yeah, all yeah exactly that's all I just feel like you don't y you often will watch films in 15 minute increments but I'll I'll commit to the entirety of it I'm not watching them in 15 minute increments and doing something else yeah but you're you're watching a film in but, like the but first he's giving that minutes. but he's giving that movie its full attention in that time though. I would much rather watch a movie literally in fifteen minute increments and pay attention the entire Who's time, time for than than watch a movie while I'm folding laundry or doing something else that that would take me away from that film. Yeah. Anyway, chime in in the comments on Facebook. And let us know. <laughs> do uh, hey, are you, I'm Demolition are, Man or not, Nate? Are you it's are you fine. listen? Moving on. Are you pro or anti pause? If you're pro pause, you're like me. If you're anti pause, you're like Nate and Ashley. Be like Ben. Be pro pause. Tell I'm making me. a t shirt that says pro pause. And if you're pro pause, you're probably a veterinarian. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. I know we're. Shut up. Hold on. I know we're on the same side here, but fuck you. That's a terrible joke. You, you're better than that. You know better. He I'm, loves it. He loves it though. Look no, at no, look his face right now. If, you, if you're going to be a new vet, you're going to call yourself. Pro pause. What the fuck is wrong and with you? And you're gonna have a cartoon cat with one of those the little doctor like civil thing like oh little, from back in the day yeah like wrapped around your head and he's gonna be like giving a thumbs up because that's that's pro pause. By the way, um, <laughs> for those listening, Brad's edible has officially yeah, you're, in. yeah Brad's it's edible has kicked in. There's no indication of that whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> this is a perfectly sound advertising idea, and someone's gonna take it and run with it. Anyway, uh, hey, I, I would, here at All Creature Features, we're pro pause. <laughs> exactly, it's coming. I was thinking this. I was thinking this as I was watching this film because I, you guys know, I, I wish I, I was folding not, laundry right now. <laughs> <laughs> I did fold laundry, by the way. Uh, I oh, had three kids during I had this three film. Kids. 
Well, I fold laundry all aren't the time. Aren't your kids old enough to fold their own laundry? Evelyn now? can confirm. I fold, did I fold laundry last night? Yes. But right. why aren't your kids folding their own laundry, Nate? What's the real story here? Because I do. I don't. They don't fold it. No, right. kids don't fold um, laundry. Brad, did you fold laundry when you were 11? Absolutely not, because I had a closet where I could hang them in. But does your mom still do your laundry? Today? Yes. No, of yes. course no, not. No, 100% she does. I no. bet she does. I bet she I does. Bet she does. That's not does even Does she make close. you food today? Well, of course today she did. <laughs> <laughs> It was cold, so we wanted to Do you guys share chilling. do you share in the meal making or no? Uh yeah, but definitely. Mine's like an easier, like shittier version, but <laughs> <laughs> I made a DiGiorno pizza mom and she's like, I made five hour lasagna. Hey, I'll last have night. you know that DiGiorno is a good pizza and she likes it. <laughs> <laughs> And it's because she tells me it's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> no, no, no. Not, I do miss your dad. And it's not delivery. It's DiGiorno. <laughs> anyway, so you, I, I had a question though for you okay, guys yeah, yeah. because I, as I was, you know, I, I watch things and think of it. But um, who do you think is the better? Because I, I think Sylvester Stallone's a fine actor. He's not great, but he's a fine actor. He his best was Copland. I think we discussed, what's that? Copland. But I wanted to, I wanted you Copland. to know who I wanted to ask you two specifically because you guys are '90s action star fans. Who is the better actual actor, Arnold Schwarzenegger or Sylvester Stallone? I truly believe it's Schwarzenegger, and yeah. it's only because he has the additional hiccup of not being American. Like, to be able to actually pass off as anybody that, that isn't, like, is speaking English. It's so hard but to get the language. Sylvester gr- Stallone's not speaking English mostly. <laughs> <laughs> That's very fair. I think Schwarzenegger is a more versatile performer either. Like Stallone can occasionally be funny, but Schwarzenegger knows how to be funny. Schwarzenegger has a great sense of humor in yeah. the first place. Whereas as written, the you know, when he tried to do some comedies, and of course there's choices that are made here, right? Yeah. Stop on my mom will shoot water. But I would I would posit that uh Stallone's Best biggest attempt at comedy was a movie called Oscar, where he played Snaps Provolone. Yeah, it's like take off of mafia movies. Mm-hmm. I actually really like that. It's not a very it's panned pretty critically. I really like that film because of how fast paced it is and and what Stallone's trying to do. I get it, but he's still not very funny in it. He's not a very great performer in it. He's just kind of doing what he would do him right. Yeah, uh, Schwarzenegger has some range. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw Maggie in, later on yeah. in his career. I did very, very good film. Uh, Collateral uh, Damage was another one where he it was less actiony and more just distraught father. Yeah. Um, so as he got older, for sure. But also, try to do what he did in Terminator, or Terminator Two. Tr- just try to act like a robot like that. It's actually pretty hard to do. He pulls that off so well. Uh, he's a he's a pretty good actor. And yeah. the other question I had too, as I was thinking about this, was because I I I, I want to know. What do you guys think of the action stars, current even, right? Because I was I was listening to an interview by Dave Bautista, right, who wants to become a serious actor. He and he's wants, said that for a long time. Yeah, but he's trying, right? He's yeah. trying, but but he, I, I think he's frustrated because he doesn't always get the roles. Is there anybody that you can think of that really built a name for themselves in the action genre that ended up becoming a more serious actor that, that maybe won an award or something, like that, that legitimately was... Maybe a little more renowned for being. I, a, I think that that you have to kind of not rephrase the question, but you have to remember what action stars were. So, like for for a fact, right? Bruce Willis was an action star in movies first, mm-hmm. and then maybe developed a few other roles and yeah. became more of a versatile actor. Right? Uh, Clint Eastwood was Dirty Harry, which back in the seventies, that's an action star. And then as he moves forward in his yeah, career, Clint Eastwood is a, a legitimate, actor. pretty versatile yeah. actor, westerns and things like that. But he got his start for for all intents and purposes as Dirty Harry, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So there's no, actually like that, I, that's a, actually a pretty. Good I think point. that those. So to define what an action star is, I think that we're, maybe what you're asking more of is in the genre of like the bulky kind of like silly action meathead. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. I the, think that the, the Dave Batistas, right? Does, I think The Rock. It was he was the the bad guy in the Scorpion King was his breakout role. But what what has he done that has been a legitimate? I guess what I'm because he does some co- good comedy work now, right? Yeah, Pain, and, Pain and Gain is yeah, and exceptional. Gain. Okay, he is. Have you ever seen that movie? I don't think I have. So Brad, you're gonna give that to him next because Pain and Gain is phenomenal. I love that movie. Yeah, uh, but has he done anything else that's serious? Southland really? Tales is pretty good. He was in uh, Walking Tall. <laughs> See, that's that's where he came from, though. Is what I'm saying. But like again, his his singing, his voice acting in Moana, mm-hmm. like 
there's range here. That that's an actual performer. Yeah, I, I guess, yeah. Uh, so I'd okay. say The Rock probably. I, I guess I, I look at, at him obviously different than like a Clint Eastwood who exactly. like won but awards. It's, it's Clint different, Eastwood did different win than what an action star was. I think that like what we're trying to. Or did Clint Eastwood win acting awards, or was it more his directing awards? Uh, I don't know if he ever got any acting. Yeah, awards. I guess maybe I'm thinking because again he's a very heralded. Yeah. Person, but more, I guess, is probably direction. Yeah, than is acting. Part. Um, I would also say that maybe someone like Sean Connery could be a good example. Oh yeah, started off young as James Bond, Jimmy Bond. Yeah, so if you call that an action role, yeah, those right, are which, you, which it is different kind of. It's yeah, the James Bond are action movies, but like it's just action was different, and you know, and, and it also, re- but like I would say, like again, James Bond requires a suave person in the first place, whereas you know. Hercules in New York or the Terminator yeah. is just a very one note yeah. performance. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. That's a very clearly meathead type of role that and they so want. Schwarzenegger like getting into I again, I think like a movie like uh, Last Action Hero is incredibly ahead of its time. I think it's super like underrated. Yeah. And again, it's it's his sensibility. Twins, Kindergarten Cop where he's playing a it's a comedy. Yeah. And he's fish out of water. He's doing so well. I think that he really is the one that that like changed uh, how maybe people see just the Austrian oak bodybuilder. He was able to do that, and it's a very rare person that can come in our industry and do that. Jason Statham uh, is going to always be the transporter expendables. Like I don't see him taking on too many nuanced roles other than some Guy Ritchie films. Yeah. All right, moving on to Demolition Man. So this is actually a very good film. Um, I, what I liked about this film a lot, though, is I didn't. I went into this film thinking that it was um, the fifth element. I don't know why. Like, not that it was the fifth element. Hey, it's a but fair comparison, it, though. But, it, it, but it's, it's... Futuristic it's, 90s. Yeah. Futuristic, but, but it's very different, though. Oh, of course, right? yeah. yeah. The, it's, it's far different more Different kind nuanced. of action tone, yeah. It's also just... It makes you think a little more, I think. And Yeah, it's a little more serious. Yeah, exactly. And I, I just genuinely loved... The dynamic that Wesley Snipes and Sylvester Stallone have, and this idea that the world can change in a way that we become unprepared for the change, and it's not that far away, right? So this is set in 1996, 2032. Maybe because we're in 2024, going to be 2025. In 1996, seems like a, a second ago for me, a little bit, right? Didn't right. seem that long ago. But, like, the whole world has changed and that we become unprepared for, you know, this, this utopia world that has been created to to live in in this world. But uh, I really enjoyed the film. Uh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, my kids are running around. I was just stomping <laughs> like dinosaurs up there. I'm so sorry. Uh, but, no, uh, so one of the things, like, one of the things I really like about this film is, um, Yes, '90s silly action, right? But now talk I about think it was all that silly though. But like no, it, like like you know, it's it's a it's it's very clearly good guy bad guy. Here's the premise, right? Yeah. But there's more nuance here than normal for a '90s kind of like movie because at the time you got to remember the competition was like freaking you know marked for death with Steven Seagal and you know they had a lot of '90s action films that were not not this nuanced like the whole Dennis uh, uh, or um Dennis Dennis the Menace. Oh my goodness! What Dennis Farina. No, <laughs> Dennis Leary. De- Dennis, Dennis Hopper. Dennis Leary's character from the underground Dennis and like the fighting back to steal the food, uh, things like that. But also the inside jokes that were are never explained, like, like the three shells in the bathroom. Like he doesn't know how to use the three shells. Nope. That's really funny to me because they never explain it. And back then, a lot of stuff was just like oh, hitting you over the head yeah. comedy wise and that was something that left to be determined and I really like that they did things like that. I have a cool uh piece of artwork that I got from like a like a pop culture gallery show that is just like a cool illustration of the three she- seashells and I put it outside of my bathroom door so that if you know you know. I will one up you. I have an action I figure. I have the three seashells. No, I have an action figure yeah. of the three seashells. It was a custom made uh, I was buying custom made ones for a while. Yeah, and it says the three se- the three shells, and then in quotes it says, "You'll know how to use them." Yeah. So, did you guys know that the director of this um, is Marco Brimbilla? Oh yeah, totally. I'm a huge. Oh yeah, I'm a brimhead. Uh, me and MB, we go way, way back. No, you. I'm almost ninety nine percent sure you don't because he's only done like four films, and this is his, I think, last one that he did. Or no, he's only done four. 
This was the first one he did. Then he did a movie called Excess Baggage. Yeah, I was just gonna say Excess Baggage. Yeah, that's one of the one of the, my favorite ones yeah. that he did. Dinotopia. Yeah. Oh, no, the, well, Dinotopia. We, it's classic MB. Yeah, we we love dinos. I go hard for dinos. Oh yeah. And Destricted. Did you yep. see that one? Oh, uh, yep. Destricted. That was. It was uh, a good take on Restricted. Yeah, it had a before, but it's a solid legacy bits. sequel. Yeah, yeah. before it, even it, it, sequels. No, thing. And, and Destricted is an anthology film that explores the line where art and pornography intersect. So well, that's why it was a big hit with uh yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> me, uh, I I do know that. But actually, I thought this is brilliantly directed, and it surprised me that I thought I was going to find somebody that was a bigger director, like John that. McTiernan or something. Something that was like, oh, Ren- Rennie he's Harlan. probably done some other bigger things, but it's kind of a one note director on this. Yeah, um, Excess Baggage stars Alicia Silverstone. Actually, I remember seeing that trailer on like some VHS that I had that I watched all the time. Nice. Um. So you like Demolition Man? Yeah, I did. Um, I was glad I watched him. Brad, uh, what movie did you watch? Uh, oh, I'll, I'll leave my assignment for last, since that's the last movie I watched. Uh, no, I s- you do this, by the way, you do this every time. And we love where, it. Where like, I ask, what's the last we movie you saw? And you take it as like a, I've got to think about the exact, la- that's that's not the point of this. But I, I like to be accurate with the way I speak. It's just, you know what, we're going to change this. Words no have longer, meanings, no, and I like to I'm adhere no to them. I'm no longer saying... What's the last movie you saw? I'm going to just say, what movies have you seen lately? That's how we're going to do it because you do this every time and it wastes my fucking time. And I You're don't the like one it. who asked the question. You, Why don't we yeah. just change it? Like, give me the last two movies you've seen. Yeah, actually, for Brad, that's what it's going to be. But I'll, what but two the, movies have you seen? But then I'll have out to think about it in order, though. So it's just, just tell me movies you've seen. Still the same problem. I started, so I've only ever seen the first Friday the 13th movie. I've never actually seen. Any of the other movies. So you've never seen the anything with the 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 masked Dacian Voorhees character. Yeah, I've I've seen I've seen clips. I'm familiar. Well, course, I'm familiar course. with like the vibes stuff like that, and you know, and the look of Jason and everything. But yeah, I've never actually watched any of the full Friday the Thirteenth movies. Okay. So, uh, since it's spooky season, I decided spooky dookie season. Uh, spooky dookie season. I decided to start digging into them. So I rewatched the original Friday the Thirteenth, and it was just as I remember it. Uh, and then I started watching two and three and four, and so I'm basically where they thought maybe the franchise would quote unquote end because it is called Friday the Thirteenth, the final, the final part. Oh, they have tried <laughs> to end this multiple oh, yeah. times. Of course, there's four more movies. Of course, <laughs> uh, and that's my not- favorite of which, Jason Takes Manhattan. I can't wait yeah. for you to get there. It's an all-time bonkers. Oh, fest. I'm sure. I it's can't wait. Insane. Yeah, I'm excited to see that. Uh, and then, of course, there's Freddy versus Jason. But before I do that, I'm gonna go watch all the Nightmare Elm Street, movies. Yeah, because I haven't seen anything after the original. Oh, yeah. The Betty's Johnny Depp, and then I'm, you're out. I'm familiar with that. That uh, with enough that like I know the character gets weirder and stuff, and then I know New Nightmare is kind of like a, a reboot slash like meta, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, it's one of those like both of these series are. Um, we don't know what we are other than a slasher, and right. then they get to a, a point where they go, "Oh, we know exactly what we are," and we, they lean hard into yeah. it, and you're like, "Oh, here we go," right. and that's when it become they become really fun. Unfortunately for uh, Friday the Thirteenth, it takes a lot longer. Oh yeah, Freddy knows who he is. You know, by like the the third movie, it starts to get really weird. Because even Friday the Thirteenth Part Two. He doesn't have the mask yet. He's just wearing uh, yeah. a hood on his head. They they still lean into this as a straight up slasher fi- flick where there's no real comedy in it yeah. other than like you know punching people's heads off and stuff. But like Freddy gets there pretty quickly, and yeah. it's, I think you're going to enjoy that series a lot more. Also, one thing that was fun is that uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part Three was famously a 3D. Yeah, installment, and so there's like very obvious 3D things of like they're playing. Yeah, he's got like a yo-yo, and like the angles like, <laughs> oh, it's coming at me, and like even the way Jason kills, like he throws stuff, and like it's supposed to come out at- of the screen at you and everything. Um, I do think that the the soundtrack for that movie was a lot of fun because it had some like 80s like horror Sith like dun, 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 oh yeah, and so it and was then, the, the the Jason theme in and of itself is more, maybe. The most classic, other than Halloween, yeah, for sure. The, it's, ch- 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 that's yeah, that is horror. It's creepy. It's creepy. Uh, but they're they're just these are just fun, honestly, because sure. it's it's about the the gory kills. They're silly, you know? yeah. They're silly. Um, and of course, it's about the flagrant nudity for no reason. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of tits. The the funniest thing is that every now and then horror movies that you can see them dipping into like slightly porn sensibility. Yeah, it's like, oh, what do you mean they encountered two hot twins this time? Yeah. <laughs> And of course, both those twins end up topless in the movie. And of course, the tropes become like if you have sex in the movie, you die, right? Oh, and Vir- everyone's having sex in the Friday the Thirteenth movie. Oh, yeah. By the way, so many people. Even, 
Even Mrs. Voorhees, which is a really weird twist. Even Corey Feldman, who is like a, a, t- a 10, 11, 12 year old kid in this, he like gets excited because he sees a girl take her shirt off across like the house in the, in the fourth one. So he's like, oh, fuck yeah. And so uh, everyone's horny in these movies. Yeah. I mean, nothing much changes. That's true. The people are still horny as hell in horror movies. Oh, horror movies? Horny movies. Oh, yeah. No, I was just talking about life. Oh, you are pretty horny in life. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, that's, uh, that's gross. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's gross. You guys, you guys talking about being horny? Uh, so I watched those movies. That sounded like uh, Beale Juice, by the way. Mm. <laughs> yeah, 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 he's talking about being yeah, horny. Yeah, he's talking about being horny. Um, yeah, <laughs> save that for later. <laughs> so uh, I was doing more of a more of a. So now you haven't really watched LaFleur. any TV lately. No, 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 Brad. What's what else? We got we we spent way too much time talking about other stuff. No, what I'm just checking? What other movies did you checking. watch? Did you watch any other movie? No. Did have I you watched any other movies? No. For real? I watched a full season of TV. Did you watch any other movie? Uh, a very cinematic. Did you series w- that's lovely and it kind of right, has, so I watched has the vibe of romantic comedy a uh-huh. that, like that aren't made much anymore. Uh, but I watched the entire first season of Nobody Wants This. Have no, you heard about the show? No, I've not heard this. It's a new romantic comedy series uh, that has Adam Brody and Kristen Bell in the leads, and Adam Brody plays a guy who is uh, a rabbi and kind of kind of a cool rabbi, and Kristen Bell hosts this uh, podcast where her and her sister talk about sex, and they meet and have the like a little meet cute and whatnot and. Uh, it's kind of complicated because uh, Adam Brody's family, you know, is like pretty hard into like he should probably be marrying someone Jewish, and Kristen Bell is uh, you know this feisty person who has the sex podcast, so you know she's like uh, this shiksa who's like mm-hmm. you know a little probably a little inappropriate, and uh, it's just really good. The dynamic between them, they have a genuine spark and chemistry when it comes to the romance, but because they're Kristen Bell and Adam Brody, they're also very funny, mm-hmm. uh, and they're great together. I love as a Adam couple. Brody. Oh yeah, and he's super charming and funny in this in the show too, but. Uh, I dug this show so much. It's uh, it's ten. Mindy Kaling feeling a little bit or uh, no, not really. It's it leans less obviously like into the comedy. Like Mindy Kaling is very definitely making a comedy. This is more of like a romance that happens to also be pretty funny, but in a very genuine kind of way. Um, I would say it feels more like like big sick territory okay. or sleeping yep. with other people that yep. that kind of thing. Um, but just just really good. Uh, ten episodes on Netflix. They're all under twenty minute or under thirty minutes, and yeah, it's just it's just fantastic. All right, I'll watch it. Yeah, can't say enough good things about it. Ben, did you were you excited about that? Ben, we're podcast is back. Ben, we got Ben. We have a podcast that's going on. Were you were you excited hey, about about ben. watching? Ben. Mm. Hey, hey, Ben. Pop of those. No, we're doing podcast podcast, buddy. Are you guys back to talking about movies? I really wasn't paying. I was texting. You're, you're, you're so I'm not joking. I was literally texting. I don't care. Who are you texting? I, I, I texted Jamie and Drew Buchanan for dropping off a, a care pa- package at our house. Yeah, that was very nice of them. Uh, I texted uh, Dan White, pinball Dan White. Love loved Mr. Dan White. Oscar Bernanke. Uh, you are a human chode. No, we don't. This is not a fucking TV podcast. And anytime you guys do it, I just I sh- you saw it. I swung the mic away from me. But you I know don't what? care. You know what? Ashley and heard I honestly did not hear. Ashley heard what we were talking about, and she's gonna make you watch the show. I bet. I hope she does. Yeah. I'm not joking. I couldn't repeat a word you guys said. See? Yeah. yeah. Guess yeah. what? You're gonna be folding towels. Yeah, folding towels and watching that, that show, YouTube. and then you're gonna get and then you're gonna get sucked into it, and then you're gonna be like, "Fuck, man, I love TV." What TV's great? The other movie you watched. Uh, I was assigned a movie. By my thoughtful friend Nate. Hey, he knows the movies that don't be that, all chummy, chummy because you just talked about fucking TV for twenty minutes. He knows the movies that tickle my fancy. Hey, buddy. He knows how to give me a movie that has a point, mm-hmm. uh, that 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 oh, touches. Oh, I cannot wait. Touches to my you. heart. I'm gonna assign you the worst piece uh, of shit you've ever it, seen next it, time. It, it, it keep catches, going. Keep going. Captures my attention and keeps you it. Fucking prick. Mm-hmm. Here we go. And this is no exception. Uh, Nate assigned me the Count of Monte Cristo. Did, uh, yeah, and my my fiance Brittany was shocked when I told her that I hadn't seen this I, movie. I was shocked because she loves this movie. I do too. Who um, doesn't? Then, How could you not like this movie? The funny thing is, I've never heard, really heard anybody like gush about it. I, I I know it was mostly held like in in decent favor. You know, like no one thought it was bad necessarily or anything. It's great. No, this was is really good because it's it's is it great? Yeah, honestly, it's 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 several movies in once. Yeah. You know. 
Uh, you have a little bit of swashbuckling. You have a little bit of it's revenge. betrayal drama. You have, you have revenge. It's revenge, prison, Brad. Prison break. Yeah, you know, like because an hour in, I'm like, oh, where is this going? If he were already here, this this movie walked so the Rock could run. Yeah, this, and, and you get where Jim Caviezel, like, you're like, oh, this guy actually is pretty good at what he does. No, he he, he like, was a, he was a good actor before he went cuckoo. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you get where, like, oh no, I I get why people thought he was gonna be a big thing. Yeah. He was he was very good in this. Um, I'm not sure that I entirely buy that nobody recognizes him when mm-hmm. he comes back. I, I know a beard and long hair can do a lot of heavy lifting. But also, how long was he gone in the movie? Thirteen years. And so, but people, he didn't really change his look. Again, thirteen years, and like as far as his like distinct facial features, people like a, people like if I'm pretty dumb back then. If I'm the person he just engaged got engaged to before he left, I see, and I'm immediately no, no, he'd be like. Brian? Because she's skeptical. Holy shit, like, Brian. Like, she thinks he looks a lot like him, but she's not like immediately, oh, that's my hu- husband. <laughs> no, and he would definitely. Like, if I if I didn't see Ashley for 13 years, I'd be like, and she walked to the room and she's like, my, my name is the Countess Delacorte. Right. And I'm like, Ashley? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fucking Ashley. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, stop. No, no, I'm, I, stop. I, I, I'm sorry, sir. I, I beg your pardon. I'm the Countess. And, Ashley, what the fuck? How are Rune and Ender? <laughs> and, then you, and then you go, okay, Countess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just smack her on the tush like you do. Hey, did um, you recognize the boy? Yeah, of course I recognize the boy. Henry Cavill. Yeah. As Guy Pierce's son. Yes. Was not expecting it. Guy Pierce playing a what a little dandy boy, all time prick, as always. <laughs> oh, yeah. Guy Pierce right? is awful. He's like, awful. Just, I mean, he's so good. He's, but he's great. Just like he's he's probably because this was what two thousand two when this came out two thousand one two thousand two yeah two thousand two was it two thousand two you're you're killing it with the dates yeah, for years you're so killing it with the dates so back then uh, it was one of the first times that, that was I would have been like in my just graduating high school getting into college. It's when the first time I saw an actor, and I was like, I fucking hate that guy because of how good yeah. of a villain he plays. Because yeah. before that, you know, I didn't care enough about acting and, and actors yeah. to, to de- like delineate. But I remember seeing him being like, he's so good, I don't like the person. Yeah, that's a great actor. And Richard Harris also is in this too. Yeah, which is so good. Uh, yeah, R.I.P. But yeah, he's he's fantastic. Yeah, but Overall, yeah, I'm glad you like this. Very very good. It movie. is. Yeah, it is a little long, those... but but worth it. No, it, it didn't feel long either. It was it, it's like two hours and twenty minutes. Yeah, but it's 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 and it, there's enough shift in the story that's yeah. like, oh, where are we going now? Because they're they're telling a couple different stories. Yeah, no, but, and and there's it for being as long as it is, it didn't feel like there was a lag point, which is really yeah. really hard to do. It just keeps going, long. but yeah. maybe because it does have such different shit, not shifting genres, but there's almost. You know, you've got all these different elements. Yeah, you got the, the the okay, the betrayal, the love, lockup, the escape, you know, the revenge, yeah. and the reveal. You know, all of these things. It's a it's so most movies have three acts, right? Yeah. This felt like five acts. Yeah, but all moved very well. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, that is, no, that's it. That's all the movies that I watched. All right. Any other TV shows? Nope. I watched. <laughs> uh, I introduced the boys to Ghostbusters. Did I tell you this? No. I think we talked about it on the last. All right. Episode. Didn't I'm just we? trying to catch up to see where where we were. Maybe we did. I introduced them to Gremlins. Oh, they've never seen that. And how'd that go? They really liked it. Uh, because I and remember it, being scared. Of no, movies. here's the thing. Uh, it's 2024. Ender is seven, and he goes, "Oh, that's fake." Like he knows that, so he's able to enjoy it. Whereas we try and convince him it was real, though. No, God, no. Oh, that's what I would do. The no, we were the reverse. I want him to start watching less cartoons and more real movies. So I'm like, do it, buddy. You can you can see that's a puppet and this. We're explaining how movies are made to him, so he can just really catch up. As far as that, Um, but it's so nice to introduce older movies to this generation because they can actually skew a little bit. Like you can you can show a, a little bit more aggressive '80s films. To kids these days because it's it looks so fake to them. Mm. You mean like so, Fatal Attraction? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he did not like Basic Instinct, um, but it was because they all smoke. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we did notice, though, obviously in Ghostbusters that if, if it didn't say before, uh, the smoking was oh yeah that took us out of it. It was like oh wow because like oh yeah no because I said Ender the first time you ever see Ray Stance smoke he's working on mm-hmm. the uh, the the car and so it takes you from uh, I don't know if I said this on the podcast or not uh, remind me they are very intellectual they are scientists and mm-hmm. then when they become Ghostbusters 
the first scene you see is Ray working on the car smoking a cigarette, meaning this is more blue collar work. Mm-hmm. So the the it's a it's actually probably a, a kind of a plot device yeah. to like show you, oh, they're they're not these nerds, they're now more blue collar. Do you yeah. agree with that? I think so, but I think it also just shows like how smart they are too, that like it's not just science, like they can like engineer stuff. They but I'm talking things. about the smoking part. Oh, I think because, because you never see them smoke as scientists when they become Ghostbusters. Cigarettes yeah, in every I, scene. I think that's. I think that's probably that. That might be that part of be. it, but I also think it's just one of the things too, where like they're they're not scientists for long in the movie because you uh, and the only time you ever see them be- I before they're Ghostbusters. Choose to believe that it is a direct choice by the filmmakers. You could very well be right. Th- let's start having them smoke like real blue collar guys because now they're wearing jumpsuits instead mm-hmm. of wearing lab coats. Yeah, I think I think you're right that that could have been the impetus behind it for so, sure. So, that being said, we watched Gremlin tons of smoking. Oh yeah. Tons of inappropriate behavior by these gremlins. Even the Crazy gremlins stuff. are smoking. Gremlins are smoking a lot by the way. Oh yeah. Um so I say that to say this. We then watched Gremlins 2. Yeah. Uh, what so what the absolute? Fu- I don't think I've ever seen it. Well, it's a like new I batch. thought. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. You're not wrong. It's Gremlins to a new batch. But what the fuck did we watch? We are like even even kids, seven and ten year olds. Like did that Stewie Griffin turn and looked at me very slowly like what are we watching but i love it in a it's so campy in a completely and, yeah. different way it's it's campy it's they hilarious break the fourth wall a it's bunch. Bas- it's basically a parody of gremlins yes, and it's, it is. it's 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 a it's a big swing it's but a i think huge it's swing. so much fun though it's a cult classic but i i see why it wasn't super well received yeah. when it came out hulk hogan is in this movie and he threatens like they cut the actual film and now we're you're not watching the movie yeah. anymore. And Hulk like they, then they go to the theater in which the movie is playing. Yep. And the theater patron or the, the theater um uh, the manager yep. goes in, bothers Hulk Hogan, who is in full Hulkamania gear, and he goes, "Hey, there's gremlins up. They've inter- interrupted the movie that we are all watching as the audience." Hulk Hogan looks into cameras like, "I'll take care of this. Do you need me to come up there and have the Hulkster tear apart some Grimsters?" And then they start the movie again. So yeah, it goes, of course. it's crazy it is, bonkers. It's an awesome cartoon. It's weird as fuck. Yeah. I don't know what we were watching. It was nuts. It's, yeah, it's the perfect horror live action cartoon. They right? loved it. I mean, uh, we we are actually, so we're, we're like 10 minutes from the end because it was really bedtime. They had to go. So we, I was like, hey, buddies, we'll, we'll finish this the next day or whatever. But it is absolute bonkers. Like, so who's the voice of uh, Gizmo? Howie Mandel. Uh, is it Howie Mandel? Yeah. That makes sense. Um, also, I, I I have my screensaver on my phone. Uh, <laughs> I I would laugh so hard if it was just a non sequitur. Uh, it's pornography. <laughs> it's a, it's it's uh it's Ariana Grande. <laughs> Uh, you see what that is? Oh yeah, the electric gremlin. That's great. So that nice. is they they trap a gremlin who is an electric gremlin in a phone. And so I have that as my screensaver now. Yeah, I like that. And I I actually wish I thought of it. Commented at, to Ashley that if you go and look at the film, it is a incredibly well done graphic for the for 1990 when this film came out. I'm pretty sure it's just flat out animation. Oh yeah, but it it is crisp. Yeah. it is awesome. It's very well done. Yeah. So anyway, we really had a good time watching it. It's really weird. It's yeah. really out there, but it's a lot of fun. Um, and then I watched my assigned movie. Um, no one will save you. Mm-hmm. This is a 2021. Uh. uh Sci-fi uh, horror thriller it's movie. A 2023 film. Oh, is it 2023? Mm-hmm. It's set. In I guess tw- it was only last year. Set in. T- it's set maybe in 20. The one with Caitlin Deaver. Yeah. Deaver. 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 Uh, her her the the character uh, lives good. on a in a farmhouse by herself. Her mom has passed on in 2019. Um, her best friend has passed on as a little girl. They were little girls together, and the and the and the little girl uh best friend passed on. We don't know why, but. Everyone in town hates this woman. Mm-hmm. By the way, are you impressed that I saw this film? You seen this film? Yeah. Oh wow. My daughter Nora wanted to watch it, and I watched it with her. I was terrified she wasn't. Did you ever talk about it on the podcast? I don't remember. Probably not. Probably not. Uh, this film I is think I did though, but I don't know. It's it's very, so. Let me just say, I liked it. I liked it a lot. There's a lot going on here. Um, it's short. You know, hour thirty three. It's a quick hitter. 
it's they they do the right amount of build up. Uh, they they don't do the thing where they try to come up with a new style of alien. Yeah. So it's an alien invasion film, but they, if everybody's seen the movie Paul, with that kind of caricature of an alien, yeah, that's what these are. They're 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 little green men with big eyes with varying levels. I Bearing, guess yeah, say. it's like it's like it's like at the at the arcade we've got the the small plushie, the medium, and the yeah. giant. Yeah, that's exactly what this is. Flying saucers, literally. Mm-hmm. Um, the only nuance or difference is their feet are these like tripod legs. Tri- well, yeah. there are like five of them. Yeah, and they yeah. can just like 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 do the do the, the 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 move from Adam's family with the thing. Yeah, that's what their feet do. Right, and it's but then also their the the last digit of like your last knuckle that splays out flat. Yeah, so it's this weird look. It, it, for effect, it was awesome in the film. Yeah, um, uh, crittering. And chittering were things that happened in the in the subtitles. Oh, interesting! Chittering, chittering, uh, animal chitter, creature yeah. chittering, and it's a very good example of what a chittering is. It's very like yeah, a lot of good noises in this film. But overall, it's a story almost less about alien invasion and more about this woman and why people hate her yeah. so much. And what did you do? And I will not spoil this honestly, even though it only came out in twenty twenty or it came out two years ago. Uh, last year whatever watch it like yeah. it's really worth your time to find out what that reveal is because it happens at the end of the film you finally find out why I love this movie so much first also the one thing you didn't mention that is incredibly cool about it is it is dialogue There's no free. dialogue yeah. well except they yeah. say a few things yeah but this is but mostly this funnily enough this is a prime example of the kind of movie you want someone to watch because of the lack of dialogue mm-hmm. and things that are being explained for you unless you're watching visually this was the last one actually that we uh, argued about because she said, "Don't pause it. I'm just going to get up and do stuff." I'm like, "Can't do that with this movie. Everything that is on screen is important," and that's the case with every movie, but even more so with a movie like this. I would like to say that from his bathroom, with the door open, I can see the entire TV. Uh-huh. I'm still watching it. Mm-hmm. I don't bring my phone into the bathroom. When you go to the movie theater, do you go stand I don't just go to the movie just theater. outside I the? Gone or care if to go you to were the to go to the movie theater, would you stand just outside the door? And think you were still watching the movie, and then go to the bathroom. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I just pee in the doorway at that point. Why not? Right. It's a very good film. One, one. I think I didn't look this up, but I think there's. I think there's a continuity error. Okay, well. Mm-hmm. So one of the aliens, and I won't. Again, I really do want to keep this spoiler free because if you're, if you're, it's spooky season. If you're hemming and hawing about a film to watch, this is very good. Mm-hmm. So it's called. No one will save you. It's on Hulu, I mm-hmm. believe. It's worth a watch. It's an hour and a half long. It's a breeze. There's no nudity. There's alien death, but not really any. It's not jump scary. It's it's a thriller, really, more mm-hmm. than a horror. It's there, it's not. There, there's a there's some, there's some scary moments. It's scary, but I yeah. I don't. I mean, like, and I'm saying watch this with your kids. It's suspenseful but I, more than it's, scary. Yeah, it's it's mm-hmm. way more suspenseful than scary. It's not grotesque. No, no, no. I, I you guys know I don't like. It's slasher not. Films it's not like the Descent slasher. or something weird right. where there's broken bones and and people dying like that. The the weird thing that happened was, um, in I'll just say in the film, uh, uh one of the aliens gets gets stabbed in the head with uh with an object, and the alien dies, and then the lady, uh, uh covers him up with a towel or whatever a blanket, and then. To check to see if the alien's dead, like a day later or whatever, she removes the blanket, and there is an open hole where that thing used to be, mm-hmm. right? And then cut to, like, maybe a day later, uh, she's moving the body, and the thing is back in its head, like, still stabbed in there. And we rewound it, and we rewound it, and we fast forward it, and, we, and I just think it's an honest-to-God continuity error. There, cause there's, I was thinking, oh, well, they probably explain what, nope, it, I think they just screwed up. Hmm, interesting. So that was the only thing that I can say that was like, what, what? Because again, I love movies like this, but when something like that happens, I think it's purposeful. So I'm waiting for the explanation yeah. of why that happened, and I, okay. I can't find one. The uh, to, to sell this film a little bit more and why I was wanting to watch this as well is it is written and directed by Brian Duffield, who wrote two other really fantastic movies, 
Uh, I really liked the babysitter. Did you guys see the babysitter? I haven't seen oh, the babysitter. I've what? Heard, I've heard it's good though. And, Brad and Love and Monsters. There's the movie I'm going to give you next time. Yeah, Love and Monsters is fantastic. Oh, Love uh, and Monsters is awesome. So both of those films, great films. This is the third. I mean, he's done more than that, but I, I so really love those. Films. Much like I don't think that you should show your kids the babysitter or Love and Monsters, maybe even because it's a little little too much. These are still like not grotesque, you know, yeah. breaking bones movies that are horror. These are definitely just more suspenseful. And fun, honestly. Like, yeah. it was kind of like a whodunit. I'm waiting to see, like, why do they hate her so much? Yeah. We kept focusing on that aspect of it the whole time. It was, it was thanks, man. It was a good movie. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, I... I also watched The Expendables, too. <laughs> <laughs> Just to make sure that I wasn't watching good movies. I interviewed Brian Duffield uh, after this movie, uh, around the time the movie came out. And so, if you haven't seen it yet and you he's watch it... He's only 38. It, like, the dude... No, he, he's he's great, and he's, he's, he's great. It's great to talk to great him. Career, and so, yeah, feel free to go seek out my interview with him on slashfilm.com dot com because it's a uh, it's a solid one. Okay, all right. I think it's time for what? What's it time for? I I don't know what part of the show we're in. Hmm. What are you guys looking at me for? Mm-hmm. You know what time it is. <sighs> You just saw so many movies, so why don't you just sing a song, you know? It's true of the time. Yeah. I don't want to I don't want to do it this time. You know, I just met Evelini. I don't want her to judge me. Like she's never heard the podcast. She doesn't know how bad if this is. If you think the judging isn't already done, I don't know what to tell you. No, she's formed such hard opinions by you, about you by now, I'm sure. Just let it go. Just let it let it fly, buddy. Let the song move. Well, sorry, Evelyn. What, no, what was that? Oh, we had a conversation kind of off air. She's being kind to you. Where she's being very well, she's being very kind all night. But she said, "Don't, don't let that thing happen." You know, where you're just doubting yourself. Yeah. You know, you just gotta I believe agree. in yourself. Yeah, yeah, believe in yourself. Let your freak flag fly. Yeah. What, what was that, Brad? Don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm not ashamed. Believe in yourself. That's the way to start. Believe. I believe in watching some trailers. I believe in watching some trailers. Do you believe in watching trailers with me and Ben and the Brett? Heck is happening. What song is this? I don't even share. Do you believe in watching? Oh, okay. Do you well, believe was... in? No. I thought you were doing kind of a hip hop song, <laughs> <laughs> like an R. Kelly like ballad or something. <laughs> You'd be doing R. I Kelly think, fits. But yeah, like, you what? didn't. You didn't give Cher enough like depth or like presence in her voice. I'm like, not good at this. We've but talked like, about you like, make me do it, and then when I do like, it, you're like, that was pretty shitty, actually. <laughs> Why do you think I don't like doing it? <laughs> He's not <laughs> right. It's remix to Trailer Nation with Papa straight out the kitchen, watching trailers with Brad and Nate and Ben is so great. Fucking my dad, but like, what the no, fuck? There you go. That was good, though. That, that, was, hey, was, that was a hey, good start if you hadn't bailed on I'm it. I'm going to tell you what your dad never has. I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> I do it, and they're like, Fuck you! I mean, that was terrible. But like, share requires so much more. You believe in marching some trailers? There you go. There, there it we is. Go. That you, was were, it. you were doing like, do you believe in watching some so trailers? If, if I organically would have said, it was like almost like a, do you almost, believe in marching some trailers? Like it just sounds like it was I'm like, almost like an Aaron <laughs> Neville. Like it just sounds like I'm doing a deaf impression, and I don't want to be that person. <laughs> and I don't know much. <laughs> but I know no, some I know. trailers <laughs> there you go. that may be all I've seen this week. I came became Kermit at the end, I think. <laughs> Kermit the Frog here. <laughs> hey, welcome to the Muppet Show. <laughs> uh, that's Lorne Michaels as Kermit. <laughs> <laughs> These impressions keep evolving. It's a weird, weird array we laughing, got here. Laughing pretty hard, Ashley. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Do you, do you believe in life after a frog? <laughs> I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Do you want to hear my Miss Piggy? Oh, please. Hey, yeah. yeah, it's pretty good. Karate yeah, that's, Piggy. That's all I got. Do you anyway, do, do you do a, a Snuffleupagus? A Snuffleupagus? Hey, bird. That's Dave Chappelle <laughs> as a Snuffleupagus. <laughs> bird, I'm sick. I need some snack, bird. <laughs> yeah, it's just me doing Chappelle doing Snuffle- yeah. Snuffy. That's what that hey, is. Hey, bird. Uh, it's trailer time. We're gonna talk about a couple trailers uh, that we watched. One of them. Did we watch the first trailer for this on this podcast, or did we, we bail on it? We've watched both of the 
I I know we watched a teaser from Moana two before. No, we we I think we did. Have we talked about both these though? These are both. Wait a minute, let's do it. We watched two trailers. Here they are. The first one's about Bob Dylan. These are both new trailers. I, I don't know if we watched the first teaser for I think we did. this. There's, there's a chance we did. Uh, but yeah, these are new full trailers for these movies. Uh, well, the first one is a complete unknown, which is a. Well, no, it's. I mean, it's pretty well known. It's it's Timmy uh, Chalamet. It's, it's a movie about Bob Dylan. The industry knows about it. This is a music biopic with Timothy Chalamet as Bob Dylan, and. Uh, I gotta say, as somebody who isn't like in love with Timothy Chalamet, doing a pretty good job. He's doing an incredible job here, and he actually is doing his own singing as Dylan too, which is even more impressive because he does sound very much like. I have to say, like, again, I'm also in that camp with like, in the right role. Yeah, but like a lot of times, like that's Timothy Chalamet. Yeah. And this one, he man, he sounds is pretty. It, is pretty, it because pretty good. a little bit like he was elevated, maybe a bit too too soon? Prematurely, uh, yeah. I wonder if and he now just... he's growing into actually being. I mean, the yeah. dude's not that old, right? He's no, of course. Twenty-eight. Also, I didn't know they were doing a biopic of, of uh, Bob Dylan when he was thirteen. So <laughs> this is good. I mean, Bob Dylan was only like <laughs> seventeen good. or eighteen. He was young when he became became pretty famous. Yeah. But um, Elle Fanning is also in this. Uh, she's she's been great uh, as she, she's grown up. I, I honestly think that she's kind of e- eclipsed Dakota Fanning in a lot of ways. I agree. Uh, well, kind of like a, a little bit of the Karen Culkin. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah, that's a good point. Edward Norton's in this. Mm-hmm. Um, As Woody Guthrie. Uh, let's see who else. Finally, a movie about somebody not giving a white guy a chance. <laughs> you know, we've been waiting and waiting, and now we're finally here. Oh, that's who plays Johnny Cash, Boyd Holbrook. I didn't notice. I, I knew. Yeah. Uh, Boyd I Holbrook from The Predator. That's true. Yeah. Well, 100%. Um, so I didn't. I knew there was somebody... Dan Fogler's in this. Uh, also, for those of you that uh, uh, were not in the audience with me to see The Predator, you haven't seen it. Uh, Boyd Holbrook was the villain in Logan. Yes, that's Which maybe true. you actually would recognize him from. Mm-hmm. No, I'm excited about this film. It looks very good. Uh, Bob Dylan had an... Well, he's still alive, but... You know. <laughs> in a great life. But he had an <laughs> Bob Dylan, R.I.P., great, great songwriter. ...story to get to where he is. Yeah. And, He's he's actually a guy that has a decent amount of social anxiety. He's I got think, all I these think... weird like there's a lot of reasons for him to not be the incredible artist that he is. Yeah. Brad, do your best Bob Dylan. Oh, well, maybe I'll go down to the market and I sing about my drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Nate. How does it feel? Oh, oh not there bad, you go. dude. Yeah. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Well, I like that a lot, actually. So uh, I listen to Bob Dylan. Even though this feels like it's going to be a pretty traditional rock biopic, I think Bob Dylan's story is interesting enough, and it, at the very least, it this looks good. Like no, I, it, I'm not expecting this good is production value. It doesn't feel like a Bohemian Rhapsody, right, or right. you know. Um, even though I feel like it will hit a lot of the same, you know, tropes in, in a certain way. Now, I, I think the to, story is different after it, that. It it's won't... a love triangle. Yeah. Right? It, I want you to explain that triangle. a little bit for the listener because I know exactly what you mean, but this this is a movie about Bob Dylan, maybe and less about Bob Dylan's music. Yeah, maybe. Because when I look at it as like the Elton John biopic and-, and Well, I, I, I wouldn't they, they lump are, the Elton John biopic in though because- The Bohemian El- Rhapsody was about really the, the band's music more than it was about the band because, I, yeah, they, were, they, they, they filled in some gaps, but yeah. like, it was a showcase for like, here's the songs you love. Yeah. And, and this seems to be like, we're going to tell a story about Bob Dylan's career. Yeah, but like I also, I also think some of it too comes from like, there was- ever since uh, Walk the Line and Ray were released, there's- that's and, walk, of, and Walk Hard. You will know. So I, I'm going to get to that. The the those two biopics kind of defined a certain genre of like rock biopic, and a lot of biopics now follow that formula of like, oh, this person's famous, and like flashing back to like all the things that f- helped define who they are. Like this is why they are, and this I is never where that song came from. Ray, but is that the same? Yeah, and so so Walk Hard uh, is the parody of Walk sure. the Line and Ray and movies of that ilk, where John C. Riley plays a Johnny Cash esque performer. Who goes through all the all different the eras times of music? To make him yeah, who he is. and it's all the cliche stuff that biopics have become. And Bo- Bohemian Rhapsody really felt like it hit that on the head really hard, along with just being kind of like a jukebox showcase for all the Queen songs that well, you love. And also, that was because th- some of the members of the band helped produce it. Right. So anytime you get somebody to be like, "Hey, I'm going to allow you to make a movie about my life," 
also, here's all the shit you can't do. Yeah. Right? It's not but gritty then, at all. But then you have something like the Elton John thing. I never saw it, so I can't really. So it, th- that's particularly interesting because it, even though it does follow the same narrative trajectory as your normal biopic, because it's a full-blown musical style fantasy in the same style of like Elton John's, you know, artistic style as far as his like wardrobe and like music videos and just general vibe. Because of that, it turns the story into something that has a lot more life. It feels like if they turned a Broadway musical into a movie about Elton John. Like an actual movie rather than just a showcase yeah, for the like, songs. Yeah, and not, not just a dramatized version of his life. It still has those dramatized moments, but the musical sequences where his songs come to life are completely different. And according to what I can find about this movie, this is about a very specific time in his life yeah. where... Um, but also, not just in his life, in the evolution of folk of music, folk music where they went from acoustic guitar to electric. Yeah, guitar. which was a that, big. Deal. That seems like a nothing right, kind of, but it was a huge deal. Yeah, and and he because there's it. a moment in the trailer where like, he's going to do an electric, like not a macho. Yeah. yeah, and that was what the fuck he is. <laughs> That's so weird to me. It's like what? <laughs> he's not going to wear a collared shirt on this show or <laughs> t-shirts only. Damn it. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, I I think this looks good, uh, even though I'm sure it'll fall into some of those same tropes. But I, I, I no, I actually for the first time in a long time, I'm in for something like this. Yeah. Because I realized after watching this, of course I know his songs, but I know nothing, literally nothing about the man. Yeah. I just know he's revered, uh, but I know more about like Bruce Springsteen than I know about Bob Dylan. And and as somebody who you know is, you know, 43, I feel like I should know more about this guy. You don't read books though. I listen to him. <laughs> uh, we also watched. That's a lie. I don't listen to him either. <laughs> we watched a trailer uh, for another musical movie of a different kind. This is speaking of the Rock, a full from earlier full uh, trailer, which they call a special look. I'm not sure why, but uh, it's basically a full trailer for Moana Two. So a way to get you to know, watch the trailer, calling the, it something other than a trailer. The sequel to Moana, the Disney movie. Um, I love the first Moana. I, uh, we've let it about go, <laughs> let it go. We're rowing our boats and coming back. Let it go, let it row, yeah. row harder than you've ever done. Yeah, he he, he always knows one part of the song and then lo- totally loses the melody. <laughs> Is that not Moana? Not not quite. But. So all right, hey, I tried my best. This. Uh, <laughs> um, it- hi ho, hi ho. Oh, boy. It's the seas we row. It's uh, this is a sequel, and I think Moana, the original movie, is better than the Frozen movies. Yes, um, I am. Moana. I'm Love unsure it. of how the sequel will turn out because the way this kind of came together was they were intending to do like a limited animated series, and for some reason they just cut it together in an hour and forty minute movie. Well, no, so they they took it and they did like shape it into a movie so i don't know how how much it changed from what it would have looked like if it were a series hey, to it being a movie they used to do this all the time and i have the clam shells to prove it lion king 2 i know but like the, they, and those were know, not very they good were though. Ama- oh, so that's they so good i'm a little concerned that the maybe quality the, doesn't dip at all i'm a little concerned that maybe the story quality won't be there because of they how they've adapted it but th- i will say this trailer does look pretty good i like the story that's there I like what's developing with Moana's family. Nate froze his brow. What's he complaining about? Uh, th- there's just w- what I think made part of this first film magical was the soundtrack. It yes. Had fantastic. And part of that was Lin-Manuel Miranda. Absolutely. And he's not back on this one. Makes right. me a little nervous. Yes. Yeah, so that was the second thing that I was going to say is that, that, that missing those key mm-hmm. components, I, I, I worry that it won't have the same snappiness that the first one did. because that first one that the soundtrack's incredible it's funny frozen it's fun. 2 is not as good as frozen 1 i don't think well i'll disagree on that all day but the we've the, had this conversation yeah. on soundtrack this podcast. isn't clearly as good but this what, is the same thing. argument you've done before we're not rehashing it if you want to hear if you want to hear this argument find the episode we talked about it for like half an hour and i had to shut you guys both up the only reason ben had to shut us up is because he like doesn't have any anything like, to participate. With, you like, legitimately droned on and in, in in real detail about these fucking. Ben songs. only just recently got kids, so like he doesn't really have you know the kind of repeat that actually respect for. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I get it. 
doesn't have the respect for animated movies that they deserve. And so uh, that argument is an important one, and we're going to keep it going. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. I'm hopeful. Me but too. I, I, but I'm skeptical. I'm not. Yeah. yeah. I'm not I'm, expecting All I'm doing much, is I want to I, I have I want to have time for the game. Do you like Moana? I love Moana. And are you interested in Moana? I love the, I love the, the, the rooster. Are you, hey, hey. Whatever. He's a cock. <laughs> Are you got him? That just sounds like a got a little, got a little Nate giggle. Vendetta. Uh are you excited interested will you watch Moana 2? Uh I mean honestly every new movie that is kids related that that comes out we watch yeah. now uh, all of them. I watched Despicable Me 4. I watched Woody Woodpecker goes to camp. <laughs> I watched Sonic 5, I don't know, whatever. We watch them all. Sonic 3 is not out yet. Well, we, we saw I in the know, future. Did you watch the movies. Knuckles series on Paramount Plus? No, we don't watch TV. Uh, that makes, that we makes watch sense. Movies. Yeah. Uh, listen, I'm down to being able to watch like two movies a week now, so we're not watching it. I've got four hours for entertainment on TV. Yeah, don't it's we know not it. going to be TV. It's going to be movies. It's HBO. It's not TV. <laughs> it's HBO. Um, ba, ba, ba. Ba, 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 bum, bum, bum. So you got a better voice than I do. So, Nate, you got a game for us? I did. I, I created a game here. <laughs> <Yeah>. Nope. Nope. Um, <laughs> My girlfriend Evelini is here on uh, uh, in the room. She, she's not oh, she is so much better than you. Yeah. Okay. Wow. She's just we better know. than you. But, Alyssa, but, I love you, but I met her and I'm like, wow, there's something here. Like you, you got to do better, buddy. It's Step it up. <laughs> literally what my dad said. Um, <laughs> but um, so I created a game about films that um, are set in or have as a key character in Brazil. She is ah, Brazilian. Nice. And so I'm gonna be are, real good at this game. They are they are English language films. Oh, so, yeah, but it's actually it's American pro- language. It's pronounced Brazil. <laughs> Brazil. Brazil. All right. And so um, this La is going to be Brazil. a mm. game with buzzers. Uh, I'll give you a second to think of your buzzer, and then I will call on you. And you have to tell me your buzzer so that people know what your buzzer is going to be when you buzz in. Ben, go ahead. Brazil. All right. Uh, Brett. Vroom. All right. That's that's it? Vroom. Okay. All right. All right. So if you know the answer to this film, do your buzzer. No, I know the answer to the film? What? If you know the answer to this, the, the question. For oh, the film. gotcha, oh. gotcha. Sorry. All right. This 1984 romantic comedy... Is directed by Stanley Donan. The film follows two best friends who take their families on vacation to Rio de Janeiro. However, their vacation takes a complicated turn when Matthew begins a romantic relationship with Victor's teenage daughter, Jennifer. The situation becomes even more complicated as they try to keep their affairs secret while navigating through comedic misunderstandings and emotional confrontation. The film stars Michael Caine, Demi Moore, and Michelle Johnson. I have no fucking idea what this Michael movie Caine is. Michael Caine and Demi Moore from 1994. 84. 1984? Oh, 84. My yeah, goodness. Yeah, I have no idea whatsoever. Yeah, buddy. This is a film called Blame It on Rio. Yeah, never. I couldn't have pulled out my ass in 100 years. Not even close. Good start. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. This is a 2011 film that follows Blue, a domesticated Spix's macaw from Minnesota. Well, I don't know if you can say that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure if that's a mispronunciation or like something's coming out. Yeah. As he travels... To Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. What is going on with Rio de Janeiro in 2011? Yeah, we get it, buddy. You got a car that you're backing up and you're like, I'm a robot. Brad, what is this film? Rio. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, yeah. Because it's the animated one. Yes. Jesse Eisenberg and Anne Hathaway. Yep. and Two very famous Brazilian actors. Santoro. All right. This 1979 film has the protagonist investigating the theft of a space shuttle, leading him to... Conf- Bra- Brazil? Bra- yep. Brazil. What? The movie's called Brazil. No. Oh. Leading him to confront the villain, Hugo Drax. Drax plans to use it's a... It's pronounced sp- Hugo, but that's fine. Space to use a... Or, sorry. Drax plans to use a space-borne toxin to wipe out the Earth's population and repopulate the planet with his own ideal individuals. 
the Amazon plays an important element in the plot of this film. The movie combines espionage, action, and science fiction elements. It stars Roger Moore, Lois Childs, and Michael Lonsdale. It's called Never Say Brazil Again, because Roger Moore played James Bond. Hmm. <laughs> uh, I yeah, I don't know. I don't know what this is. Moonraker. Moonraker. Is it James Bond film? Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was James Bond, but I have no idea which one. I've never seen that one. Moonraker, <laughs> we rag you over the moon. Be careful, there's a man in the moon. Don't rake over him. Moonraker. Pretty good. Yeah, fine. Um, <laughs> fine. This is That's a more hot. of a junk Bond song. What? Junk Bond. You get it? It's like a, like a oh, financial Oh, it's a James thing. Bond? Yeah. yeah. Okay, funny <laughs> boy over here said a funny. This is a high octane action film oh. that follows a team of people as they plan a daring heist in Rio de Janeiro to gain their freedom. What year? While being pursued by a, a relentless federal agent. Brazil. Yep. Fast Five. Correct. Ooh. Is that why you didn't want to give the year? Yeah. Okay. Check out the big hog on bear. Yeah, it's really fucking you. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that means huge. I hooked up with a uh, Spanish speaking person in college, and she was like, "It's este es pequeño," and I was like, "Yeah, man, I get it. Yeah, you yeah, get it. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how it is. Yeah." This 1997 film sees the two primary characters struggling to keep their partnership together while facing challenges. Aiming to save their city from freezing and destruction. Vroot. It features a character Vroot. who works in a Brazilian Vroot. lab. Yeah. Vroot. He's already vooing. He's vooing. Yeah, but I like I like to have him boop. Go. Batman and Robin. Correct. That took who, place in Brazil? A, no, Uma Thurman's lab is in Brazil. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I thought the whole movie had to take place in Brazil. No, I said it has to have a part of it. Oh, now. I've been holding out for like Brazilian movies. You know how many Brazilian movies Ben has seen. Yeah, yeah internationally, seven. Hmm. This 2021 adventure film is based on a theme park attraction of the same name. The main character set out on a dangerous journey through the Amazon jungle to <laughs> Ben the Brazil. Fuck, I forgot what I was in my buzzer. Jungle was. Cruise. Correct. It's Disney's Jungle Cruise. It's actually just Jungle Cruise. Shit. Yeah, suck on that. All right. This 2016 film is a biographical adventure drama that tells the story of a British explorer. In the early 20th century, this explorer journeyed into the Amazon and became consumed with the idea of finding an ancient city. Vroot. Yep. The Lost City of Z. Correct. What? Pow! What movie is that? It's exactly what you just said it is. I get it. It's an, it's it's an, an, an explorer. And tell me the exact <laughs> fucking title of the movie. You don't care if I give you a little <laughs> yeah, like, I asked you to come down here, and it was just like to support me. This ben, is there a problem? Is there a problem? No, no, buddy. We're just having a real quick oh, side, okay. sidebar. All right, yeah. You're down here, and like, all you're doing I'm is... I'm my leg. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I'm just, just aware of this movie. The Lost City of Z. Yeah. Okay. All right. This is uh, uh, this 1992 film stars a scientist working in the Amazon rainforest to find a cure for cancer. Mm-hmm. Yep. Do Congo? Nope. No. Braz- Brazil. Congo? I, don't worry about that's it. That's in Africa. Yeah, right? I know. I just I, Bra- I realized my mistake when Brazil. I was thinking about it. Brazil. The Medicine Man. Or Medicine Man. Correct. Sorry. Yep. And Sean Connery. Um. This 2003 action comedy film features uh, bounty hunters. Brazil? Yep. The Rundown. Yeah. Mm, I don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 2003, bounty hunter. And this I just is like put, Ben's, like. By the way, <laughs> yeah, full disclosure, I, I've had two and a half drinks now. And I will say. Two and a half? Well, I mean, uh, uh, a gentleman's two and a half, <laughs> uh, 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 which means a, a normal person's 19. So I will say, you kept repeating the Amazon, and I kept going, that's not in Brazil. In my head. And I was like, why did he bring up the Amazon? And I go, oh, shit, no. I finally realized the Amazon is absolutely in Brazil. <laughs> I'm not joking. I'm like, why? Like, I get it. Like, Because he was saying, you know, these movies take place partially in Brazil. And then also the Amazon is what I was thinking. Yeah, I'm not smart. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last one. 
is, I think this is pretty much the winner takes all here. I love it. This is a high octane action film that features the return of a daredevil agent. After coming out of self-imposed exile, he goes on a mission to retrieve a powerful weapon known as Pandora's Box, all while facing off against a group of deadly mercenaries. This film is packed with intense stunts, espionage, and global adventures. Brazil. Yes. <sighs> Fast and the Furious 7. Really? That's my guess. What's the year again? He didn't say it. It is. He didn't say it. No, no, you can't say it now because I've already buzzed in, so he's all the information. I thought he did say the year. No, he didn't. Did you? Mm. You didn't say the year. I did not, but I will say it. 2017. Hmm. Tricky. I don't know. It starts, the film starts with an NSA agent trying unsuccessfully to recruit footballer Neymar for the Triple X program. Oh. Triple X State of the Union. Nope. No, it's uh Triple X Reborn. Rebirth. No. Triple X what's the name of the fucking I, third movie? I can't remember. Uh, Triple X Triple X The Return of Xander Cage Correct Yeah there it is Yeah I had to forget, remember What his stupid fucking name was I was, was. Saying, like Actually I said that And I was like Yeah And I'm like Aw oh, It's sad you know that <laughs> <laughs> Well that's it guys well, I, Brad I is the more, winner but Good job buddy I, I could have given you more That like, was listen, close That though. was great buddy That was a great uh, game we've got I love more. that game I've got another game um, For <gasps> Not now We'll play oh, this uh, Next time I'm so excited <laughs> Evelyn is on. We'll do Put uh, your pants back on. Yeah. <laughs> Brazil um, game for. Hold on. You don't make that sound, right? Only when I'm getting it started. <laughs> that, no. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess I, I think I can understand it. What'd you say? Let me answer that. <laughs> answer that. <laughs> no, no, no. That's, that's like what he does by himself. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, he's like, you couldn't hear it, but Ashley got up and left. Yeah. All right. That's all we got, guys. Thanks, Nate. <laughs> See you later. Like, I said Ashley got up and left, and Nate goes, that's, that's all we got. Guys. He got up as well. Yep, it's like, like, all right, well, I guess I, I mean, If Ashley's done, I'm done. I'll come over and press pause on the fucking show. I don't <laughs> even know how it works. We're ending the podcast. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs> well, Evelini, uh, I'm sorry, Ashley. I'm sorry. You guys had to be here you know and what? listen to this. I'm chuckle. not sorry. <laughs> You're high, and I'm a little tipsy. Ooh, buddy. And Nate was here as well. <laughs> We all love a good hoedown. Listen. That's what we call the podcast recording. Don't say that when there are two very wonderful women on the, the couches. You here. and I have very different ideas of what a hoedown is. Is it the, the Toby Keith song? No, it's your mom. Boom! What the fuck? Oh, my mom listens to the, uh, She doesn't listen. <laughs> no. I almost got you, but I didn't because they don't listen. Uh, Nate. I love you, buddy. I love you too, buddy. Brad, I love you, buddy. I love you guys. Evelini, I was it's honestly, I know you don't have a microphone, but it's so nice to meet you. You're wonderful. We love Actually, it. I love you so much. Uh so yeah. Uh make sure that you comment and let us know. Uh have you seen Demolition Man? Mm-hmm. Will you see uh No One Will Save You? Yeah. And what's your favorite hostess cake? <laughs> And your favorite hostess cake. <laughs> Mine is, I just really like mini donuts. Oh, no, it's a ho-ho. Wait, the chocolate covered ones or the yeah, powdered yeah, ones? Oh, okay. <laughs> Get the fuck out of powdered here. Powdered ones are delicious, buddy. Oh, go fuck yourself. You know, you, 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 God, you're such an old man. I love the mini oh, donuts. Oh, I need chocolate on my donuts. Actually, I, I, I just, I really like the cinnamon bun. The honey bun? The, the frosted honey bun. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. Not, not the OG, like... No, no, the frosted like, honey get bun. Get the fuck out yeah, of here. Yeah, I don't need the fucking... The thing I don't like about that, though, is you take the plastic off, some of the sticky, frosting always sticky. comes mm. with the plastic. Also sticky hands. And then, well, I don't care about that, but, like, you <laughs> you peel the plastic off, and, like, honestly, so, like, half of the, the frosting comes, it's on the package. Yeah. When you, and so then you're in, awkward in public. I'm licking, I'm licking yeah. the plastic, mm -hmm. and it's just, uh, people look at you. Yeah, you gotta be better about the wrapper. Well, so P. Diddy should have been as well. Wow. Topi wow. Topical and gross. <laughs> the Ben Conowitz story. <laughs> bye, everybody. Bye. Nah, cheating, eh?